hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.7.2 released the other day and many of you have had a bunch of questions for me about this, whether or not you can downgrade, what's new in it, whether or not it's worth upgrading to, so I thought we'd talk about that. Now this came in at 237.9 megabytes on my iPhone 6s Plus and it's available from the iPhone 6s, 6s Plus all the way up to the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. However, you won't have this update necessarily if you're checking for a software update. It really depends what device you're actually on. So on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, as you can see here, if we go into settings, you'll see it says iOS 16.2 is now available. If I go to my software updates, it doesn't find iOS 15.7.2, but this one is currently on iOS 15.2. One, I believe. So if we go and do our about page here, you can see we're on iOS 15.1 on the 12 pro max. So for some reason, they're not making it easy to stay on iOS 15. It really depends on the device. So technically iOS 15.7.2 and iPad OS 15.7.2 are available. However, on the iPad, it's a little easier to stay on iOS 15. So if we go to general and software update, you'll see as it loads here, I have the option for 15.7. 7.2 or iPad OS 16. So either of those are available as this was released the same day as iOS 16.2 was to the public. So a lot of different options here and some odd choices by Apple. And to answer the question, can you downgrade your current device that supports iOS 15 to iOS 15.7.2 if you were on iOS 16.1 or 16.2? The technical answer is yes, but it's complicated. You have to be a developer and have had to have previous access to iOS 15.7.2 RC or release candidate. Previous beta versions still may work, but I was able to downgrade my iPhone 8 Plus using the iOS 15.7.2 release candidate file for that. After Apple released it to the public, they did not make it available easily to everyone else. So they only have it available for the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, all the way up to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and SE. They're no longer available for the 8 Plus or iPhone 13. They really want you on iOS 16. So I thought I'd make this video to answer that question and talk about what's new. And so as far as what's new in this update, Apple released this due to security updates. So if you're on iOS 15.7.1 or earlier and you have the ability to install this update, if we go to Apple's security website and scroll down, you'll see a ton of different security updates with this update. So if we scroll down here, you'll see basically the same patches that they implemented with iOS 16.2 we have here as well. So Safari, WebKit, and a bunch of others. And you can see here, if you wanna take a look at this, the kernel patch here, it tells you what it's available for iPhone 6s all models, iPhone 7 all models, iPhone SE first generation, iPad Pro all models, iPad Air 2 and later, and you'll see it covers all of the iPad generations, but not all of the iPhones. The impact or the issue was an app may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. The fix or description was a race condition was addressed with additional validation. And you can see here that Ian Beer of Google Project Zero reported this and helped them patch this or find the issue. So this is something that is very important to this update. And if you're on iOS 15 and you can update to 15.7.2, I absolutely would do that just for the security patches alone. If you're using it on your everyday phone and you're not doing anything else with it, I would highly recommend you install that update, whether it be an iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, or the latest just on iOS 15 with maybe iPhone 13 Pro if you're able to. So I would highly recommend installing that. There's no modem update in this update and it's mostly just a security update. Performance should not be affected, battery life should not be affected, and it should just be a patch for everything overall. Now, for those of you curious, this is my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Let's take a look at the battery health. I haven't looked at this in years and I typically don't look at it, but I know a lot of people will ask. You'll see this is at 94%. This was the phone I used 100% of the time when it was new. It went down to about 95% during that usage time of the first year. If we take a look at the older phone here, the iPhone 6S Plus, if the battery doesn't turn the phone off. We're at 1%. Let's go down. Since this is an older phone, I've never replaced the battery in. We're at 85%. Again, I used it hundred percent for a year. 
and then I didn't full time again. So I'm using about five to 10% of the battery health over its lifespan. As far as future releases, we could see iOS 15.7.3 within 2023, or if there's an emergency security patch, we could see it as soon as the end of the year, but I don't think we'll see any other updates. We have iOS 16.2 and 16.3 betas, and we can continue to see iOS 16.3 betas probably within January, the second week of January, and then probably a final release either at the end of January or sometime in February. We don't really know. Apple takes a break at this point, and that's usually what we have. But don't expect any new features with iOS 15. We'll see major new features with iOS 17 in June when they usually show that off at WWDC. So if you have any other questions about iOS 15, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Just wanted to let you know about the update and whether or not you can downgrade. So it's just not an easy thing to do. And if you can do it, that's fine, but you'll need a computer and it will wipe the device and everything else. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.